Welcome to Truth in History. God's true people, Israel. Revelation of God's plan. Fulfillment of Bible prophecy. Mystery of God shall be finished. Kingdoms become kingdoms of Christ. Truth in History with Charles A. Jennings. Welcome once again to Truth in History and to this series that we are teaching about entitled, Where Satan's Seat Is. What our general theme is, is that Satan, the enemy, the oppressor, whatever you want to call him, the adversary, seemingly has had different locations and different systems in the earth to promote wickedness and to keep alive that mystery of iniquity that is working against Scripture, against Christianity, against Christ, against His true people Israel, I said true people Israel, and also against His true church. Because there's a false Israel in the earth and there's a false church in the earth. And we're talking about these different cities. Well, a literal city, I want to define this once again, a literal city is a community of citizens, it has boundaries, powers of government, it has industry, it has a commercial system, it has a social system within it, and also a religious life. But the nature of that city will perpetuate itself it may change, it may alter, as the demographics change and as culture changes, but it will perpetuate its own nature to the next generation and the next and the next. And first of all, we talked about the city of Enoch that was established by Cain in Genesis chapter 4. Then we talked about the city of Babel that was established by Nimrod. And he was from one of the sons of Ham. Then we talked about the city of Sodom. And each one of these cities takes on its own personality. And the city of Enoch its chief characteristics was religious perversion or false religion established by a murderer, violence. Then the chief characteristic of the city of Babel was rebellion against God. Because this man, Nimrod, was a mighty warrior against the Lord. And then we talked about the city of Sodom, and it was established by Canaanites. All of the sons of Ham were not Canaanites. Only one son was Canaan. And he is the only son that was cursed because he was an offspring of incest. And Ham's other son, Mizraim, he wasn't cursed. He went down and established the land of Egypt and built an empire. But the Canaanites as you well know, they inhabited the land of Canaan. And they were very wicked. And, and the Lord lists about 18 to 20 different capital crimes 
that they were committing. It was their lifestyle. You see, criminality becomes a lifestyle. And now it's a national lifestyle in America. Criminality. Everything from the top uh, echelons of government down to some street uh, vermin. And it's in all aspects of our society. In our religious life, crooked preachers, crooked politicians, crooked school systems. Here in this state, one state agency lost $20 million. Hmm. $20 million. And this state is struggling to give its school teachers a raise. And as far as I know, the person that, quote, lost that money has not been prosecuted. Crime is everywhere. And we came also and talked about the city of Sodom. Sexual perversion. Now we come to the city of Babylon, ancient Babylon. It was built in the land of Shinar. That's what it tells us. It was built in the land basically in the same area or maybe on the same foundation as the city of Babel. In Daniel chapter 1 and verse number 2, He's talking about the city of Babylon in the land of Shinar. And what was the characteristic of this city? Number one, it had one man over it. And you notice that most of these cities are built upon personalities. So, it was humanistic, it was, its leadership was very egotistical, they conquered the land of Judah and the city of Jerusalem, they took the sacred vessels back to Babylon, and they desecrated these sacred vessels that were used in the temple of God. And they drank wine in worship and celebration of their heathen gods. And also it became an empire, an absolute total empire, because Judah and Jerusalem was not the only land that Babylon conquered. Nebuchadnezzar, he, he conquered this land, and this land, and this land. Imperialism. And that's the spirit that is in the world today that has pervaded our own U.S. government. Imperialism. We want to be the policemen of the world. Some of our politicians wants to, quote, settle the disputes of civil strifes within different sovereign nations, whether it be the Middle East or wherever. Look what our CIA has done. It's Babylonianism, folks. The, our CIA has actually fomented civil wars and then go in and try to settle the dispute when they created it. Well, in Babylon, when the Jews went to Babylon, there was an evil element of Jews that went to Babylon. And while they were there for 70 years, they came up with what 
we call the Babylonian money system, or usury. And they came up with the tally stick. Well, out of Babylon also, from this wicked element of Jews came the Talmud. But you see, out of Babylon, imperialism and the humanistic money system, or usury. And that's what holds us in bondage to this day. Usury holds us in bondage. And that's what the Federal Reserve System is all about. Well, we know that the city of Babylon was overthrown. You know, let's fast forward in this story. Babylon gave us humanistic money system. Then it was, the city of Babylon was conquered by Medo-Persia. Well, what did Medo-Persia do? Out of that same location, out of that same city, they gave us humanistic law. In other words, encounter distinction from God's law man's law, case law. Go into a law library and there's hundreds of books. But God gave us a law contained in one book. You see, it's man's law against God's law. What does evil men hate? What they hate is God's law, they hate election, and they hate theocracy. They hate divine law, election, and theocracy. That's what evil men hate. They want to rule themselves. Well, the Persian Empire was conquered by the Grecian Empire. So what did the Grecian Empire give us? The Greeks gave us humanistic philosophy. Then it was conquered by Rome. What did Rome give us? Rome gave us humanistic religion. So we got a humanistic a money system, got a humanistic law system, we got a humanistic philosophy system, and we got a humanistic religion. And perpetuated from generation to generation, it's conquered our colleges, it's taken over our universities, even our seminaries. But do you notice that the image that God gave this dream, that God gave Daniel, Nebuchadnezzar was represented by gold. Gold, the most precious element on the planet, so to speak. Well, God overthrew that city. Thou art weighed in the balances and found warning. And that Babylonian system, including not only Babylon itself, but Babylon, Persia, Greece, and Rome, is in that spirit is in the earth today, and it pervades our culture. Well, let's go to another city. In Revelation chapter 2, I have already referred to this. Revelation chapter 2, verse 13, the Lord is admonishing the churches of Asia, and He comes to Pergamos, 
in chapter 2, verse 13, and he says, I know thy works, and where you dwell, even where Satan's seat is. What did he mean by that? And if you would check out history, the paganism, the false religions of this Babylonian, Persian, Grecian, Roman Empire, the paganism that was once headquartered in Babylon was moved to the city of Pergamos in Turkey, or Asia Minor, as it was called at that time. And the Lord pinpointed that city and says, right now, at present, that's the headquarters of Satan's seat on the earth, pagan religion. Well, folks, I hate to tell you this, because I've been reprimanded for saying this, but the paganism that was once in Babylon moved to Pergamos was later transferred to Rome. Rome, Rome, Italy. Being that it was transferred to there, you see, this book was written, the Revelation book, approximately 96 A.D. So the city of Pergamos was in existence. Satan's seat existed at that time, but it began to wane in its influence when Rome began to rise, not only as pagan Rome, but papal Rome. And when Christianity became strong in the first century, second century, and third century, and then they began to mix the two of Christianity and paganism together, and you know we, what we got. We got a false religion in the earth centered in the city of Rome, Italy. And I know that hurts because some sincere people are Roman Catholic. But let's be honest, paganism has invaded the church way back 325 A.D. and coming this way. So therefore, what does the city of Pergamos represent? Paganism. And then ancient Rome. Imperialism. And statism. In other words, the Caesars Nero and others, they were the boss. You did not challenge them. And they put many saints to death because they believed that the Caesars were gods. Statism. And the state has become the greatest substitute for God in the earth because it takes on characteristics of divinity, irresistibility, and indivisibility. You can't divide it. You can't resist it. Infallibility. The state is infallible. That's statism. Well, don't you see that spirit of ancient Rome in our world today? I mean, you, you could 
look what it did under communism. This, look what it's done in the different communist nations around the world. That's one prime example. And it usually revolves around a personality. Marx, Karl Marx, born into the home of a rabbi, came up with this concept of Marxism that has caused untold misery in the earth. Romanism, pagan and papal, ruled the world, the civilized Western world, for 1260 years. But that spirit that was in ancient Rome is still present in our world today. Well, let's go to another city, which seems to be the consummation of all the above. The city of Enoch, the city of Babel, the city of Sodom, the city of Babylon, the city of Pergamos, the city of ancient Rome, and now we come to modern Babylon, modern Babylonianism. Genesis chapter 14. Really, folks, I'm just hitting the highlights of what these mean. Revelation 14, verse 8. It says, And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great, because she hath that great city. Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she hath made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. A great city. But yet when you read the description of this city, it's not just a boundary of landmass. It's a system. It's the mystery of iniquity. Combining all these previous systems of evil that I have, I have talked about. And it says, it's a city. It functions as a city. Well, it has, there, you see, there's religious Babylon, commercial Babylon, and industrial Babylon, militaristic Babylon, religious, civil, social, industrial. That's what we're living under today. The governmental, militaristic, industrial complex, imperialism, Sodom, the spirit of Sodom, the spirit of Babel, of re rebellion against God, the city of Enoch, false religion, crime and murder. Well, it has to be perpetuated by somebody. Chapter 18, verse number 10, Revelation. It says, Standing afar off for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon. Well, why did God destroy it? Because it made the kings of the earth, kings of the earth, drink of the wine of her fornication. Fornication is illegitimate mixture. Some people say that there's going to be a one world government. We already have a one world government. We just have 
nationalistic vassals. Who rules this world? The Rothschilds? The banks? Lehman Brothers? Jacob Schiff and his banking family? Kuhn Loeb? It's a worldwide money system that locks us in. Babylonianism today is not just a land mass boundary that functions as one city. It's a worldwide system. And the chief characteristic is confusion. And I just say confusion because it incorporates all these previous evils that I talked about. It incorporates every one of those. Religious perversion, sexual perversion, governmental perversion. I think that most of you watching this program know where I'm coming from. You know what I'm saying. And you know that there's more because there's more to the story that I'm not saying. I'm not saying everything that could be said. But you know that we are living in the days of Noah, the days of Lot. It pays to have our eyes open that we are not deceived by the spirit of the iniquity that has pervaded our land. And it's time for preachers to lay aside their Hansel and Gretel sermons and patting people on the head and on the shoulder saying everything will be all right if you give a certain amount of money and God will enrich you and you'll be, you know, the cock of the walk. You'll be rich. You'll be driving two Cadillacs. You'll have a home in Palm Springs and one in Palm Beach. It's time that the preachers become prophets of God and tell the church time is short. It's time to get right with God. If you would like some of our free brochures, free magazine, just write us. We will not solicit funds from you. We don't want to just take from you, but we want to give something to you. Give the word of life. Jesus Christ is coming back as prophet, priest, and ruling king. God bless. For any material offered on this program or to be a part of this ministry, please write or call today. We thank you. And may God bless you for your response to this end time ministry. Truth in history, where the word of God is not bound.